All right, welcome back, free radicals, Tulsi Kratz, Bernie Kratz, Indy Kratz, Nobody Kratz. I'm Dave. This is the Radical Independent, where we welcome all political refugees, and we don't even have a questionnaire. We just allow you to come in. Uh, <laughs> and I am for legal immigration, just so you know. Uh, corporate media keeps covering Joe Biden's clear cognitive decline as gaffes. They obviously aren't if Biden becomes the nominee and then when he loses, remember these stories when the blame game starts, hint, media and Dem Party ignoring blinking red lights from the great Jordan Cheriton, who's done Im just impressive and uh, spot on coverage, especially on things like the Flint water crisis, which continues. To this day. Uh, this story led me to the Politico article. You click on this and then you get this. You get a car. If you want to buy the car, sharp looking car, but many of us can't afford a new car like that. Uh, I'd be one of those people. Joe Biden's string of gaffes is raising questions among Democrats about his ability to beat Trump in 2020. Blah, blah, blah. Their gaffes, their cognitive uh, declines. I don't know. I just made up a word there. Cognitive declines doesn't really go together. Uh, Biden told reporters he botched the comment he's delivered many times about the wealthy kids and the white kids. And all right, see, Joe Biden's a gaff machine, and people know that, and they accept him for being a gaff machine. And maybe this cognitive decline has been going on for years. Don't know don't really care. What I care about is this part of the article. The bias in the media against Bernie Sanders is something I think that's communicated between different news organizations. This article comes from The Hill. Now, The Hill is supposedly very nonpartisan, very uh, matter-of-fact in their approach to politics, this one sentence made me so angry, and I know a lot of people probably think I'm overreacting. The gaffes could threaten Biden's position at a time when Senator Elizabeth Warren has been on the rise, and he faces a difficult contest in the Iowa caucuses. Now, why would he face a difficult contest in the Iowa caucuses? Well, there's this guy named Bernie Sanders. Okay, now, after the debates, pretty much every reliable, decent poll out there had Bernie Sanders gaining ground, and quite a bit of ground, uh, on Joe Biden. Now, yes, Elizabeth Warren has gone up as well, but in most polls, it goes Biden, Sanders, and then Warren. And before you had, like, Kamala Harris, by the way, thank you, Tulsi Gabbard, for um, eliminating that uh, neoliberal threat, Author authoritarian who would um, probably uh, go right along with this uh, increasing surveillance state, these endless wars, all the things that Tulsi supporters and many Bernie supporters are against. Now, Bernie is not my number one. He's in my five, though. You know, <laughs> Charles Barkley, he's he's in my five. Uh, technically, I would put Bernie at number two. And if Tulsi can't make those debates coming up for some stupid reason, the fact that they uh, do polling and they, they call landlines with answering machines made from, you know, 1985 that beep and then record on a cassette tape, uh, whatever. I mean, that's why uh, Biden is polling so well. Um, but no matter what news outlet covers Bernie Sanders, it's like, yeah, we know he's there. We, we know he's there. We don't want to talk about him. I don't care if you like Bernie Sanders or not. I don't care if you just think Bernie Sanders is a progressive socialist nut job. People call him Marxist, all these things. I don't care what you think of him. It doesn't matter what you think of him. What matters is that the news media continues to 
mess around with reality and promote their own reality or they impose their reality upon you. You read a story, you think, oh, The Hill. They're kind of non-biased, non-partisan. They just do articles. They're just telling it like it is. This sentence drives me crazy. Because then the ending hints that it's Elizabeth Warren who is the big rival for the Iowa caucuses. And, you know, but that's not the case. It's Bernie Sanders who could win Iowa. I'll tell you, Iowa is Bernie country. It could be Tulsi country too, by the way. Uh, Tulsi could do very well in a primary in Iowa. Uh, I'm sorry, is it Iowa? Yeah, Iowa. Okay, I was thinking for some reason of a different state. See, I'm having a cognitive decline moment, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> my gaffes are just getting worse. Uh, I'm just reading on about the individual gaffes, and uh, you know the party loyalists are all worried about Biden. Nobody seems to be worried about Bernie Sanders. And I would just like to say this. The more the media does this to people like Bernie. You had, remember Ann Coulter a few months ago? Staunch conservative. She really angers the resistance crowd. She angers a lot of people. Um, she said some crazy stuff in the past. Um, I don't follow Ann Coulter or anything. But she was getting fed up with Trump because Trump wasn't building the wall fast enough. And uh, Trump seemed really more concerned about going into Venezuela and ramping up. See, Ann Coulter, I think, is anti-war. I think she's just tired of it, like so many other conservatives. And she made this remark that if Bernie wasn't so into all of this socialism, that she might go and campaign and support him. You know why? Here's why. Here's where the connection is. Not that she's mad at Trump, but she wants authenticity in her political candidate. She wants somebody who actually means what he says. And again, whether you like Bernie Sanders or not, um, the dude means what he says. And Bernie, by the way, isn't, um, he's not Joe Biden. In other words, he doesn't do gaffes. He's not doing cognitive decline. Now you'll hear all about the aging <clears throat> the aging Bernie Sanders. Uh, the New York Times had an article about how he's walking around the Iowa State Fair and he's not talking to people, according to the New York Times. He's eating hot dogs or whatever, but he's not talking to people. He's not doing retail politics the way it's traditionally been done. You know, you kiss the baby and you shake a lot of hands and yada yada. And you make a personal connection. See, this is the other thing people say about Bernie. And I think he does have to soften up. That's why I love Tulsi Gabbard, because she can make the connection over the Internet. You know what I mean? She can make it, and you watch her, and you say, yeah, yeah. She means it, and she's sincere, and she's warm. Bernie doesn't have a lot of warm, but um, for all those people that voted for Trump, and Trump doesn't have any warm, okay, uh, our country right now needs something. And it doesn't need more of what Trump is doing. Bernie is not going to go up there and polarize people more. This is the, no way you can, actually. I mean, Bernie would get, get up there and help the working class. He would be an FDR-style president. Does he need to be rebranded? Yes. Stop saying socialism. Stop saying democratic socialism. I've said this a thousand times. I got lectured. Oh, you don't understand. We need to explain what... No. What you need to do, because the, the term has been vilified. There are a lot of terms in life that get vilified and you have to steer. Get away from them. Steer away from them. Economic populism. Uh, you know, the whole America first thing has been spoiled, apparently. So what you need to do is say, put individual Americans first ahead of the corporations, ahead of the banks, ahead of the car companies. You can go on and on. You can go down the list. Just go back and see all the people uh, Obama bailed out. See, I'm an equal opportunity offender. Obama did the bailing out, people. You know? He's the, the guy who hired all of those Wall Street people to oversee 
uh, his economic, uh, you know, his economic policies, and uh, that was that was just a scary thing. And a lot of conservatives, they, you know, they're like, okay, he's hiring the right guys. We can't really complain. So you had the neocons and the neolibs all on the same page, singing from the same hymnal. Look, uh, Joe Biden, yeah, cognitive decline, sure. Uh, but what's worse is um, Bernie Sanders just being omitted. Uh, he did great after the debates in poll after poll. Uh, and if he starts winning against a media, and I do mean this, against a media that has ignored him, this media, they'll, they'll come out with the Russian stuff. They'll, they'll start to really ramp it up and say, well, you know, a lot of those Tulsi supporters used to support Tulsi are now supporting Bernie. And you know what that means? They're all Russian bots. And Bernie might be a bot too. So, just food for thought how Bernie Sanders is being mistreated. Again, he's not my number one candidate. He may become the number one candidate for me if um, things go sideways for Tulsi Gabbard. And um, I'm just being honest. It's it's going to be a rough go for me to continue to support somebody who's at 1% or 2% in the polls and who the media continues to slander every day. That's why I think the whole process needs to be overhauled and taken over, and we need to take it over. That's why this is called the radical independent and not, you know, the progressive whatever, because it's not just progressive. It's, it's a combination of things that work and being decent to one another, even if you disagree on wedge issues and um, ending identity politics as we know it. So there you go. Uh, guilt by omission, and uh, thanks to Jordan Cheriton for um, keeping it real and doing great work. Uh, the guy is one of very few indie journalists out there who really works hard and, and deserves some praise. So, see you soon, everybody.